Hi, it's me again, Teacher Marlene, and let us feel the God's glory in every learning. Today, I will discuss the process of solving problems involving quadratic function. In this topic, the two most commonly used formula are k is equal to 4ac minus b squared all over 4a, where I discuss it from my previous discussions. And the function of x is equal to a times the square of x minus h plus k, where we can easily determine the vertex of the parabola. Let us start with the number-related problem. The sum of two numbers is 48. Find two numbers and their maximum product. Let us start with the representation. If we let x as the first number, then we can represent the second number to be 48 minus x since the sum of two numbers is 48 and f of x be the product of these two numbers. Now, let us write the equation. The f of x is equal to x times 48 minus x. We can solve it by distributive property, and we will get the f of x is equal to 48 minus x squared, where we can rewrite in the form of f of x is equal to negative x squared plus 48x. Let us identify the coefficients. So a is equal to negative 1, b is equal to 48, and c is equal to 0. Then let us substitute in k is equal to 4ac minus b squared all over 4a. Here, we obtain k is equal to 4 times 1 times 0 minus the square of 48 divided by 4 times negative 1. 4 times 1 times 0 is equal to 0. The square of 48 is 2,304, and 4 times negative 1 is negative 4. So, negative 2,304 divided by negative 4 will give us 576, and this is the maximum product. Since we obtained the maximum product, Use it to find the two numbers. Using f of x is equal to negative x squared plus 48x. Substituting f of x as 576, then write in the general form x squared minus 48x plus 576 is equal to 0. Using factoring method, we will get the quantity of x minus 24 times the quantity of x minus 24 is equal to 0. Then solve by applying the zero product rule. x minus 24 equals 0 and also x minus 24 equals 0. So both we obtain x is equal to 24. This serves as our first number. Then 48 minus x to 48 minus 24. The other number is also 24. So for our conclusion, the two numbers whose sum is 48 and the product is maximum are 24 and 24. Now, let us have a geometry related problem. What are the dimensions of the largest rectangular field that can be enclosed by 80 meters of fencing wire? Let us have the representation. So let L be the length of the field, W be the width, and P be the perimeter which is 80 meters. Now let us form our equations. From the formula of the perimeter, which is 2L plus 2W, let us substitute 80 for the perimeter. Since the terms are divisible by 2, 
the equations is simplified to 40 is equal to L plus W, where we can solve L in terms of W, so L is equal to 40 minus W. Now, using the idea of the area, we can write the function as A of W is equal to length times the width. Let us substitute the representations for the length and width. We will get A of W is equal to the length, which is 40, minus W, and the width, which is W, where we can simplify by distributive property a of W is equal to 40W minus W square. Arranging in the form of A of W is equal to negative W squared plus 40W. Let us apply the process of completing the square by adding one half of negative 40 which is negative 20 and its square is 400. Let us subtract so, negative 1, our value of A, times the 400 to balance the equation. Now, let us have the vertex form. A of W is equal to negative of the square of W minus 20 plus 400. So, we can easily obtain H is equal to 20 and K is equal to 400. Using the vertex, we will obtain the width, which is the h value, which is 20. So if width is equal to 20, the length is 40 minus 20, which is 20. So the largest rectangular field that can be enclosed by 80 meters is 400 square meters. And the dimensions are 20 meters by 20 meters. Now, let us have this motion-related problem. A 96-foot building, an object is thrown straight up into the air, then follows a trajectory. The height, S of T of the ball, above the building, after T seconds, is given by the function S of T is equal to 80T minus 16T squared. The first question is, what is the maximum height reached by the object? The second question, how long will it take the object to reach the maximum height? And last, find the time the object reached the ground. Let us start with the first question. What is the maximum height reached by the object? Using the function s of t is equal to 80t minus 16t squared, let us arrange the function into s sub t is equal to negative 16t squared plus 80t. Let us apply the process of completing the square to transform the equation into vertex form. So let us factor out the value of a which is negative 16 then the resulting coefficient of t is negative 5. Let us get 1 half of negative 5, which is negative 5 halves. Then square it. So we add negative 5 halves square and subtracted this outside the grouping symbol. So it is negative 16 times 25 over 4. The grouping symbol it's now a perfect square and can be written in the form of s of t is equal to negative 16 times the square of t minus 5 halves plus 100. This is the vertex form of the function. So the vertex has h is equal to 5 halves and k is equal to 100. This means that the maximum height reached by the object is 100 feet. Let us answer the second question. How long will it take the object to reach the maximum height? 
Remember this, the time for an object to reach the maximum height is the abscissa of the vertex of the parabola, or it is the value of h. Therefore, h is equal to 5 halves or 2.5. So this means that the object is at its maximum height after 2.5 seconds. Now let us answer the third required in the problem. Find the time the object reached the ground. Again, using the function s of t is equal to 80t minus 16t squared, let us substitute the value of s of t is equal to negative 96 since the height of the building is 96 feet. Now, it becomes negative 96 is equal to 80t minus 16t squared. Let us arrange the equation into the general form. So it is 16t squared minus 80t minus 96 equals 0. Since all of the terms are divisible by 16, let us divide every term by 16. So it becomes t squared minus 5t minus 6 is equal to 0. Then by factoring, we will get the quantity of t minus 6 times the quantity of t plus 1 is equal to 0. Then by zero product rule, t minus 6 is equal to 0 and t is equal to 6. On other hand, t plus 1 is equal to 0, so t is equal to negative 1. Since we are looking for the time, we have to reject negative 1. Therefore, the object will reach the ground in 6 seconds. Well, I hope you learned from these examples. Remember, in solving problems, you are trained to be an analytical thinker. God bless everyone!